At the break of January 25, 2015, an undercover mission was initiated, deploying nearly 400 Special Action Force commandos to apprehend two significant terrorists linked to Al-Qaeda. The primary targets were Zulkifli Abdir, alias Marwan, a Malaysian bomb expert who was one of the FBI's most sought-after terrorists, and Abdul Basit Usman, a Filipino bomb maker and Marwan's associate. The Special Action Force, also known as SAF, stands as an esteemed division within the Philippine National Police, entrusted with the responsibility of executing high-risk law enforcement operations, including counterterrorism, hostage rescue, and other specialized missions. Joining this elite unit is an exclusive privilege, as only a select few individuals are chosen, and the selection process is exceptionally challenging and demanding. During the months preceding the actual mission, the Philippine government was informed by the United States about the presence of the two terrorists supposedly seeking shelter in Mamasapano, Magandano, Philippines. Based on this intelligence, the government authorized the Philippine National Police to proceed with Oplan Exodus. With the backing of then-President Benigno Aquino III, Philippine National Police Chief Alan Purisima and SAF Director Commander Gitulio Napenas Jr., the morale of the team is soaring. The entire team was comprised of six units, with each unit entrusted with a crucial role that would significantly impact the mission's success. At the helm of the group was the 84th SAC, also known as Seaborne, consisting of 41 commandos, assigned with the primary objective of capturing Marwan and Usman. Additionally, they would lead the advance and reconnaissance of the terrain for the supporting units. Following Seaborne was the 55th SAC, comprising 36 commandos responsible for providing essential support and security to the Seaborne unit. The four other units, specifically the 45th, 42nd, 41st, and 43rd SAC, were tasked with securing the exits to ensure the safe withdrawal of the first two units. As the mission begins to unfold, the entire group remains unaware that the terrain they are about to traverse is rife with militant armed factions, including the Bang Samoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, who are striving for an independent Islamic state for the Muslim minority, and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, seeking an autonomous region separate from the central government for the Moro people. Since this territory is unfamiliar to them, the task of mapping out the area under the concealment of night becomes exceedingly challenging, if not nearly impossible particularly considering the covert nature of the operation. At 4 a.m., the Seaborne unit advanced and approached the hut where Marwan and Usman were believed to be located. Suddenly, a massive explosion shook the area as one of the Seaborne members unintentionally triggered an improvised explosive device surrounding the location. In an instant, a hail of bullets came raining down on the unit, compelling them to retaliate in self-defense. In the chaos, Abdul Basit Usman managed to escape and seek refuge in the nearby bushes. The commotion aroused other armed militant groups in the vicinity, prompting them to rush towards the scene. Fifteen minutes into the intense firefight, a well-aimed bullet struck Marwan's head, instantly killing him. The Seaborne unit accomplished its mission by neutralizing the primary target. They collected a DNA sample and a photograph of the deceased terrorist to verify his identity as Marwan. Subsequently, the Seaborne unit prepared to rendezvous with the 55th SAC for their exit from the area. Unfortunately, it was too late. The Bang Samaro Islamic Freedom Fighters, Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and other armed groups had surrounded them, initiating another firefight in which the Seaborne unit found themselves outnumbered and at a disadvantage. Meanwhile, the 55th SAC encountered obstacles in reaching their designated waypoint as they spotted Moro Islamic Liberation Front members positioned across the river, 
leaving them stranded and powerless in Barangay to Kanalipao. As dawn approached, the 55th sack was also ensnared in a fierce battle, facing a barrage of bullets from all directions. Despite continuous calls for reinforcements from the 45th sack, their attempts proved futile as they encountered gunfire each time they approached to assist the preceding units. In the meantime, Major General Edmundo Pan Hilenan dispatched another group of army reinforcements and directed the armed forces of the Philippines to inform the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, which was engaged in peace negotiations with the government. At approximately 8 a.m., the army contingent arrived to provide support to the two units who were currently fighting for their survival. However, the remaining 300 Special Action Force commandos declined to join forces with the army, citing a lack of instructions regarding the ongoing situation. As they were en route to aid the Seaborn and 55th SAC, the army received a call from the Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief of Staff, General Katapang, ordering them to abort the operation as it could jeopardize the ongoing peace process with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. By 1 p.m., the 55th SAC had suffered devastating losses, receiving no reinforcements and losing all communication with officials. The situation for the Seaborn unit was equally dire, facing imminent destruction as they endured relentless barrages of mortars and rifle fire from the surrounding armed groups. At approximately 5 p.m., the Seaborn unit resorted to using phosphorus as cover while making a strategic retreat. By 6 p.m., the intense firefight finally ceased and the armed groups withdrew from the area. Following the battle's aftermath, a total of 44 SAF commandos lost their lives, with 35 casualties from the 55th SAC and 9 from Seaborn. On May 3, 2015, during a confrontation with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the second target of the Oakland Exodus, Abdul Bazit Uzman, was killed. Attempting to divert responsibility, then President Benigno Aquino III aimed accusations at his generals and commanding officers, emphasizing the lack of communication between the armed forces of the Philippines and the militant groups. An investigation unraveled a web of graft and corruption among higher-ranking officials, contributing to the flawed structure of the operation. Consequently, the peace process was disregarded, leading to the non-arrival of reinforcements for the two units. Tragically, the families of the 44 fallen Special Action Force commandos must now face a future without their husbands, fathers, and brothers to guide them. Despite the challenges and losses, the government deemed Oakland Exodus a success in the end. A foregone conclusion is a blurry line to cross. However, one undeniable fact is that these fallen soldiers deserve the reverence of the entire nation. Their sacrifice shall forever stand as a testament to bravery and patriotism, serving as an enduring inspiration for future generations of Filipinos. Their martyrdom shall leave an indelible mark on the hearts of those willing to lay down their lives for their country, regardless of the price.